Could I speak to you for a moment, Miss Thorpe? Of course, Sergeant. What about? I wonder if you see a kid we've just brought in. Boy? No, girl. What's the charge? Well, I don't want a charge if I can help it. Thought you might talk some sense into her first. What's she been up to? Hanging around the streets the small hours most nights. Why, surely you can cope with that. I have so far, but now she swears she won't go home at all. Can't budge her. Any reason? Says she's fed up to the back teeth, wants to live on her own. Uh, what's the home like? A pretty bad. Six in the family. Father likes his drop and mother copped it in the blitz. Left her a bit uh, queer-like. Is the girl working? Yes, cashier at White's the Butchers. I see. Well, what makes you think I can do any good? Well, if you could persuade her to go back home, it'd help. We don't want another Rawlings on our hands, do we? All right, Sergeant. Bring her in and I'll see what I can do. Uh, thanks, Miss. Uh, Lawrence is the name. Lila Lawrence. All right, Sergeant. We'd like to have a private talk. Very good, Miss. Sit down, Lila. I'd rather stand, if you don't mind. All right. You know, the Sergeant's very worried about you. But he didn't mind his own business. Perhaps he thinks you are his business. Well, I'm not. How old are you, Lila? Fifteen. Do you think you're old enough to live on your own? I'm old enough to do as I like. Look, Lila, if I were your mother... Well, you're not, see? <sighs> no, I'm not. And I suppose you wouldn't take my advice if I were, so I won't give it. You're unhappy at home, aren't you? How did you guess? I don't have to. Most of the girls I see here have the same old problem. So what? Do you imagine that your home is worse than theirs? I know it is. I've got a decent job, and I want to look nice like other girls. But a fat chance I've got having to give half my money to live in a pigsty with a lot of snotty-nosed kids. You want something better, eh? Well, nobody blames you for that. I work all day, and I work darn hard. So why shouldn't I have a good time? No reason at all. It all depends on how you get it and where it gets you. Well, I know where it's going to get me. And if people will leave me alone, I'll end up all right. Gwen Rawlings had the same idea. Who's she when she's at home? You don't remember Gwen Rawlings? She stood just where you're standing not so very long ago. She had a hard life at home, much harder than yours. And her job wasn't half as good. It was at a pawnbroker's. Thank you. It's a very nice brooch. Expensive, too. I was only looking. Naturally. I wasn't pinching, if that's what you think. Oh, of course not. You wouldn't do a thing like that, now, would you? If you must know, I borrowed it to wear at a dance last night. There's no harm in that. No harm at all, except that it doesn't belong to you. You like nice things, don't you, Gwen? Yes. If you were a very nice girl, I might give it to you. You take your hands off me. All right, then. I'm afraid it'll have to be the police. Oh, you couldn't do that. I'm afraid I must. People who take other people's property end up in jail. But you can't call the police. I haven't done nothing. Very well, then. This time we leave the police out of it. You better go before I change my mind. You mean I'm sacked? Oh, you don't expect me to keep you here after this, do you? What can I tell my dad? There's no need for you to tell him anything. I'll be around to see him myself this evening. Oh, no. I think I know my duty. Look, Gwen, I, I don't want to be hard on you. Give me a little kiss and, and we'll forget about the brooch, shall we? <laughs> Good 
right, Mum. Where you been? Dancing, pictures, why? You're not gonna copy it when Dad comes home. Yeah? He wasn't half mad. Old Pottinger came round, especially to snitch on you. Where's Dad now? Went down the Green Man. I did, did he? There he is now. Hello, Dad. So you've been pinching, eh? Come here, there, you. Mum, he's belted me for the last time. Wish me luck. I do, I do, Gwendy. Where are you going? Home. Lodgings, I expect. You lied to me, won't you? I'll see. Are you all right for money? Oh, I got a couple of quid. That'll see me through till I get a job. Oh, Gwendy, Gwendy. <laughs> I've got one vacant, top floor, one of my best rooms. Could I see it, please? You can take my word, it's one of my best. Oh, I'd like to see it. All right, I seem to do nothing but traipse up and downstairs. Wipe your feet. Is it? Seventeen and six a week in advance. Seventeen and six? That's cheap for a furnished room. All right, I'll take you. Plenty after it, I can tell you. But I don't take anyone, I'm particular. In advance, you said? That's right. Ta. Half a crown change? No change. Half a crown for light and heat. Now, look here. I said you needn't take it. I can get plenty of people who will. All right. Good morning, Mrs. Jock. Good morning, Mr. Rosso. Just showing this lady the spare room. Depend on Mrs. Chalk. She'll look after you. That was Mr. Rosso, one of my regulars. Been with me over a year. Got a good job, too, in a nightclub. You got a job? Me? Of course I got a job. All right, now I'm in asking. Well, I hope you'll be comfortable. Paint a palace, but it is clean. Careful of the jug, the last lodger cracked it. Front door shut every night at 12. After that, you must use your key, but I don't like it. You single? Yes, and I've got an aunt in the nappy and an uncle in the marines. 
It'll help you to keep a simple tongue in your head, my girl. And no men friends allowed in the room. Remember that. coming in without knocking. I mightn't have had a stitch on. I wouldn't have mind. Well, I should. Okay. Next time I'll knock. There's not going to be no next time. You go back to your own room, Mr. What's your name? Jimmy Rosso. They call me Jimmy the waiter. What's your name? Gwen Rawlings. Miss Rawlings to you. And I'll thank you to get out of my room. What's the other? You afraid of me? Of course not. Then what you look so scared for? Run away from home. That's my business. Like my sister. She ran away from home because that old man beat her. Your old man beat you? Certainly not. That's what made you run away from home, eh? Oh, have it your own way. Got a job? Of course I've got a job. I'll get you one if you like. What sort of job? Take room girl. In a ladies? No. Look at your frets and coats in the small nightclub. Max is looking for a pretty girl like you. I'll speak to him if you like. All right, thanks. I'll tell him you'll uh, you'll come along tonight. Swan's Down Club, Soho Yard, ten o'clock sharp. Okay. Okay. you to the boss. Maxie. Yes, it can be done. Uh, I uh, can't talk now, so bring me later. Here's the girl I told you about. Not bad. Your legs. Lift your skirt. Hey. Come on, lift it. What for? I want to see your legs. Why? I want to see if they're any good. Come on, Bashful, I haven't got all night. Okay. Had a bit of all right, eh, Maxie? Shut up. You want a job? What's the wages? No wages. Look here. You I... get a share of the tips. With your face, you ought to make about a quid a night. A quid a night? So you want a job? Better go and see to those wine checks. Okay, Maxie. Here you are. Get into these. What here? I shan't look. I'd rather change in the ladies. Okay, lady. Make it snappy. And shut the door. It took long enough, but you. Got results. Mind you smile at the customers that way, and you've got a career in front of you. Come over here. If you want to the customer and put the other one on the hat and coat, understand? Yes. The main thing to remember is to remember. What? Always assume the fools will lose their tickets. Half of them do anyway. How old are you? Nineteen. I said, how old are you? Sixteen. You better stick to nineteen round here. So you've got to remember where you put each hat and what face came under it. And another thing, the customer is always right. And the tighter, the writer. 
but then she was unemployed, but they always want to be crew next. Good evening, sir. Hey, Red. Hmm? Look what I've found. Like to leave your hats and coats, gentlemen? Oh, we're not gentlemen, darling. We're the band. Oh. Are you the new girl? Yes. Let's hope she doesn't go the same way that Marion went. Cut it out, Art. She's a nice girl. Anyone can see that. Yeah, so was Marion. Still, I'll be seeing you, darling. Hi there, Sonia. Come on, get on the stand. Who's he when he's at home? Well, oh, that's Art Moody, the leader of the band. The rest are what's commonly known as his boys, all except me. I'm Red Farrell, the only musician in the outfit. And what's your name, victim? Gwen Rawlings, and I'm not a victim. <laughs> that's what you think. Look, Gwen Rawlings, there's the exit. Why not make a run for it while there's still time? What are you talking about? You're in the middle of a spider's web. <laughs> You're crackers. That's right, that's why I'm here. Oh, so long. I'll be seeing you. So long. What are you doing here? Oh, I was listening to the band. They're good, aren't they? Look, I pay them to play and I pay you to look after the hats. So look after the hats, will you? You get awfully wet. Well, I can't stay here all night. Always in a hurry. That's our little Gwynny. If we wait a couple of minutes, Art will give you a lift to his car. Oh, no. Why, what's wrong with that? You don't think I'd trust myself in a car with Art Moody, do you? I'm not that dumb. Don't worry. I'll be there to see you fair play. Besides, he's married. What difference does that make? Anyway, if you must know, I'm going home with Jimmy. He's gone to get a taxi. You want to watch out for that young man? Jimmy's been very decent to me. Ah, that's the big build-up. Comes just before the big letdown. I'll look after myself. I hope you will. Okay, Gwenny? Okay. Good night. Good night. Nice job, didn't I? So what? Well, do I get nothing in return? I've said thank you. What more do you want? Plenty. There's someone waiting to see you. Who is it? Go inside and you'll find out. didn't expect me, did you? I thought I told you not to come in. I just wanted to make sure you was all right. You didn't let Dad know where I was? Of course not. Oh, Gwenny, we're in a proper mess at home. Your dad's out of work again. That's nothing new. He's been on the drink for over a week. I'm just at my wit's end. What can I do about it? He wants you to come back. Some hopes. You see, you're the only one that's old enough to bring in a bit. He swears he'll find out what you're up to if it takes him six months. But he won't. Not unless you split on me. They beat me up last night because I kept my mouth shut. I can't stand much more of it. It's no use, Mum. Of course, I'm sorry he took it out on you. But he's not going to get me back, not at any price. Besides, what's the sense in us both getting belted? No sense at all, I suppose. You're right, Gwenny. It wouldn't work. But, oh, I do miss you. How's the kids? Edie's got bronchitis, but we're all right. Well, I, I'd better be going or his lordship will get suspicious. Well, where'd you say you were going? Shopping. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. Mum, look here. Buy yourself something. No, Gwenny. Oh, go on, I can spare it. Thanks a lot. I can do with it just now. Thank you, Charlie. Mad Red. Night, Sonia. Twenty-nine pound 
Oh, hello, Duchess. How are all little hats and coats? Well, I shan't be looking after them much longer. Promotion, eh? Or we were going back to your mother like a good girl. Well, if you promise to keep it yourself, I'll tell you. Max is going to let me have a go at Sonia's job. Well, well, well. We've come a long way in a short time, haven't we? How did you manage it? As if I didn't know. You say that again and I'll cop you a packet. Uh, if I might coin a phrase, you look beautiful when you're angry. What does Jimmy say about all this? Why should he say anything? It's none of his business. It's not a crime if a girl wants to get on, is it? Well, no, no crime at all. But you know you don't mean a thing to either of them, don't you? They'll just chuck you out when they've got what they want. Maybe they won't get what they want. Oh, yes, they will. I've never seen them miss out yet. <laughs> I can take care of myself. I hope you can, Gwynny. You know, you're a born sybarite. What's that? Well, it's all right. It's not an insult. It just means that you're born to luxury. You won't be content with one mink coat. You'll want three. Well, why not? Why not, indeed. But watch out, Gwynny. Do you know what they do when they want to mesmerize someone? They dazzle their eyes with beautiful bright lights. Nothing but bright lights. You're clever, you are. Correct, I can't help it. I come from an intelligent family, oozing with genius, that's me. That's why you're playing a tuppenny hateny dance band. Correct, that's why. Don't do as I do, Gwynny. Do as I say. I want to talk to you. Well, you can't, so get out. Don't you think you owe me something for getting you that job? Ain't it about time you paid back that little debt? Oh, Jimmy, you know I'm not that kind of girl. Go back to your own room. Not till I have a little something for me trouble. You get out or I'll yell so hard they'll hear me in the next street. I'm nuts about you, you know that. You think you can hold out on me, don't you? But you can't, not you. Me. If you won't give, I'm going to make it my business to take. <laughs> Oh, I've waited long enough. I'm wasting no more time. Ah, be a little. Gwen. Hey, Gwenny. I'm sorry, kid. Go away. I didn't mean it, honest. Don't tell no one. I don't want to lose my job. Don't tell Maxie. All right, but go away. You promise? Yes, but leave me alone. Sorry, Gwen. <laughs> Good night, kid. <laughs> Evening, Maxie. Brush. matter with your face? I bumped against something. Against somebody's fist from the look of it. Of course not. Jimmy. What's been happening to Gwen? Where did you get that black eye? I didn't say anything, Jimmy. Honest, I didn't. So it was you. You little rat. You can't talk to me like that. Can't I? You are fired. Get out. What for? Because you can't keep your hands off my stuff, that's why. You mean you wonder for yourself like those other kids you've had around here? Get out! All right, I'll go. But you'll be sorry. I'll fix you good and proper. And I'll fix her, too. Golly. All right, all right, I'll go. And I'll see you again one day. One day very soon. See, he's off the premises in five minutes. And see, he doesn't come back. Yes, sir. You'd better take the night off. You are no advert for the club like that. Yes, Max.
Any spot of trouble, Maxie? Well, what does it feel like to have strong men fighting over you? You mind your own business. You know, the trouble is, they do the fighting, but you're the one that gets hurt. That's my lookout. Don't you see, Duchess? You're walking slap into that little red triangle. What red triangle? The one that says Dangerous Corner. Gwen. What do you want? Oh, um, uh, Sorry about what happened. I don't want your apologies. Here, yeah, wait a minute. I didn't do no harm, did I? I get you a nice job, and then he turns around and gets me the sack. Well, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but it wasn't my fault, really. I know, I know. Well, now I'm in the soup and no mistake. And you've got to help me get out of it. Well, what can I do? Well, I ain't got no job now. No money, neither. I paid old Mother Chalk, and that clean me out. All I've got are these. They belong to me more. I'll tell you what you can do for me, Gwenny. You know the pawn shop round the corner in Broad Street? Yeah. Well, you can go and pop these and get me the money. Why can't you pop them yourself? Oh, except there knows me. Wouldn't give me nothing. Pretty girl like you would get a packet. Go on, Gwen. Give us a chance. Oh, all right. Don't say nothing about me. Over your Mars. Get it? Meet you outside the club, eight o'clock sharp. Okay. Okay. You're late. Well, what's the hurry? How much you get? Either. Oh, that's good. That's fine. I wouldn't have got more than a couple of... Is that what the fellow gives you? That note? Yes. Well, uh, you couldn't uh, give me some change, could you? I ain't got none, and... Uh, Got to catch the bus. Jimmy, what do you mean when you said you were going to fix Max good and proper? Don't worry, sweetheart. You'll find out. You'll find out pretty quick. You'll find out that I ain't finished with you, neither. Well, thanks very much, sweetheart. You can keep that for your trouble. for the job and five of for forgetting you were here. Suits me. Thanks. You'll be all right. See you in a couple of days. Good night. Good night. Boys, we are close tonight. And don't come back. Night, Gwen. Night, Red. Night. Good night, Gwen. Good night, Red. Night. Call in. Why don't you go home? A dead. What's the matter, Gwen? Jimmy said he hadn't finished with me and he saw what he did to Max. Oh, so it was our little friend, Jimmy, was it? Well, he'd never touch you. Wouldn't he? He knows where I live. Oh, Red, I don't want to be marked for life. Well, you can't possibly stay here, can you? I can't go home. I'm absolutely wet through. Look, you better come back to my place. 
Oh, Red, could I? Well, at least it will keep warm, eh? Oh, thanks, Red. You're a sport. All right. Come on. I'm afraid the place is in a bit of a mess. Very nice place. I wish I lived here. Well, just for tonight, you do. You take that coat off. You get very wet? Drenched. You'd better have a hot bath. Billy's here, boss. Okay. Come in, Billy. I got a job for you. Don't stop. Feeling better? I feel lovely now. You look it, too. Who's this? My wife. Your wife? Oh, don't worry. Annie doesn't live here anymore. She's beautiful, isn't she? Yes. Had a hell of a row about nothing, and I told her to get out. And she did? Mm hmm. Went back to Spain. Did you miss her? No, of course not. Come over here and make yourself at home. I wouldn't have left you if I'd have been her. Wouldn't you, Gwen? Of course not. I like it here. I'd like to stay here forever and ever. Oh, I'm afraid you can't do that. Can't I? No. Now, let's get this straight, Gwen. You can sleep the night here. You can take the bedroom, and I'll shake down in here. But tomorrow, we start looking for a new room for you. See? Anything you say, Red. That's better. Well, would you like a hot drink or something? No, thank you. Then off you go to bed. What, now? Yes, now. Go on, go on. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Gwen Rawlings? Yes? We're police officers. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you mind if we come in? What do you want? Well, we have reason to believe that you may know something about the theft of some jewellery from number three Georgina Street. I don't know anything about it. I haven't been there for two weeks. No. You left without giving notice, I believe, and without paying the bill. Is that right? Oh, she can have the money. Two weeks ago yesterday, right? Yes. Some jewellery stolen from Mrs. Chalk was pawned that morning by someone answering to your description and giving the name of Gwen Rawlings. Can you account for that? I pawned it for a friend. I see. Did you... Um, Tell the pawnbroker that it belonged to your mother. He told me to. Who did? My friend, Jimmy Rosso. I see. Can you give me his address? Well, I don't know where he is now. That's a pity. Did you um, give this Jimmy Rosso the five-pound note that you got from the pawnbroker? Yes. 
You didn't use it to pay for something you bought at the shop next door? Oh, I remember now. Jimmy asked me to change it for him. I see. Well, I'm afraid I must ask you to come with me to the station. Station? Yes, the police station. Well, you can't take me. I haven't done anything. If anybody took their jewellery, it was Jimmy. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. You can let your hat and coat. That was where I first met Gwen. She was brought before the court here. Do you know what a juvenile court is like, Lala? No. Oh, it's just like a meeting, really. The magistrates sit here, and the clerk of the court there, and the witnesses over there. Gwen was standing just where you are now. And Jimmy Rosso was giving evidence. And what did she say? Well, she showed me some jewellery and asked me to pawn it for her. I didn't. It's all lies. Gwen. Now, listen to me. You must not interrupt. You can say anything you want later on, but meanwhile, keep quiet. Go on. She asked you to pawn the jewellery. What happened then? Well, it sounded fishy, so I said no. Didn't know where she got the stuff. I knew she wanted money. You filthy skunk! He's out to frame me good and proper time okay, to tell Okay, okay. I've tried to do my best for you. Now I'm going to tell her the truth. You mean you weren't telling the truth before? Of course I was telling the truth, but I didn't want you to know about this. Let me see that. And that. That's what she did for me when I wouldn't give her the money. Cost me one with a bottle. All right, Mr. Rosser, you can stand down for a moment. They're rather worried about your case, Gwen. Last week, when you were first here, four people gave evidence. You heard them. Mrs. Chalk told us that she had missed some jewellery the day after you left her house. Mr. Cross, the pawnbroker, told us that you had come in the previous day and pawned it. You don't deny that, do you? No, but... Just a minute. You shall have your say later on. The uh, pawnbroker, Mr. Cross, told us that he paid you with a five-pound note. He has the number and his rubber stamp is on the back of it. That note was changed at a shop, Mr. Harper's shop. Mr. Harper said that you were the person who changed it. You don't deny that either, do you? <coughs> when I asked for your side of the story, you said that Mr. Rosso had given you the jewellery and asked you to pawn it for him, and that you gave him the change for the five-pound note. And we wanted to be absolutely fair to you, so we brought Mr. Rosso here. And you've just heard his evidence. Lies. It's a very serious thing to say about him. But it was every word of it. Well, that's for us to decide. Now, is there anything else you want to say before we go away and talk about it? Only that I wouldn't touch a rotten old jewellery with a barge pole. Is that all? If anybody took that jewellery, it was Jimmy. You ask him why he slashed Maxie with a razor. Well, what has that got to do with it? You ask him. Mr. Russell. Would you like to tell us if you did slash somebody with a razor? I never slashed anyone. But he did, I tell you, he did! Is there anyone else you want to speak for you? Don't you think we ought to see the man at whose flat she was arrested? Uh, certainly. Bring in Michael Farrell. Michael Farrell. Take the test with the right hand, repeat the oath. I swear by Almighty God, the evidence I give to the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Your name? Michael Farrell. Address? 17A, Halbert Street, West 1. Mr. Farrell, how long have you known Gwen Rawlings? I've known Gwen for the past three months. And I don't believe that she did this. Why not? Because she's not that sort of girl. And besides, she wasn't short of money. Then what is your explanation of it? I think there's something in this story about Jimmy Rosso. I don't know that he took it, but I do know that something very fishy was going on. Well, how could you know that? Because... Max Vine, the man who used to run the Swanstown Club, was attacked by a razor gang. I saw him just afterwards. And Gwen was certainly very frightened that the same thing was going to happen to her. How do you know? Because she asked to come back to my place. She was afraid to go home. I see. And you let her? Yes. Are you a married man, Mr. Farrell? Yes. Was your wife in the flat when Gwen was there? No. You mean you took a girl of 16 home to your flat while you were living there alone? Yes. Do you think the Swansdown Club is a good place for a girl of her age? No. Do you think your flat is any better? No. Do you advise her to go home to her parents? 
a matter of fact, I did. But she didn't go? No. She told me that she'd run away from home because her father had beaten her on several occasions. Very well, Mr. Farrell. Thank you. But I... Yes, Mr. Farrell? Oh, nothing. You may sit down, Gwen. Everybody stand. Now, Gwen, I want you to come over here, please. Well, Gwen, I'm sorry to say that we found you guilty of the charge. Oh, but you can't, you can't. You please sit down, Mrs. Rawling. Turn it up. Has the probation officer anything to say? This is rather an unusual case, Your Worship. Gwen's only 16, and I'm afraid her home life hasn't been very good. There are five in the family, two boys and three girls. Her father earns five pounds twelve a week when he's in work, but there's been rather a long history of unemployment, and I'm afraid a great deal too much of the money has been spent on drink. Gwen left home about three months ago, she says, because her father thrashed her. Mr. Rawlings, did you thrash your daughter before she went away? I did. Any good reason? She got the sack from her job for pension. Where was that? Pottinger's, the pawnbroker's. You say she stole while she was there. Mr. Pottinger caught her taking a brooch. That's not true. I only borrowed it to wear it a dance. I put it back. Thank you, Mr. Rawlings. You like dancing, don't you, Gwen? And pretty things and smart clothes and jewelry. Yes. Don't you? Yes, I suppose everyone does. But we've got to work for them properly and honestly. You see what happens when you try to get them any other way. And apparently this isn't the first time. I didn't do it. I'm afraid we've decided that you did. But in our opinion, you're not completely to blame for what happened. We place some of the blame on your parents' neglect and failure to control you. And we're not going to punish you harshly this time. But the difficult thing is in deciding where you're to live. In ordinary circumstances, I'd say the best thing for you would be to go back home. I won't go home. I can keep myself. Just a minute. I was going on to say that, since your home is not by any means ideal, and since you don't appear to want to go back to it anyway, we're going to send you somewhere else. Prison? No, to an approved school, where you'll be well looked after and where they will teach you self-control. The rest is up to you. If you let them help you, they will. We're going to send you there for three years. Three years? I won't go! I won't go! I didn't do it! I didn't do it! I won't go! I won't go! <laughs> Gwen, you'd like to see your mother and father now, wouldn't you? No! Oh, Gwen. No! I'm sorry. She says she won't see anyone. Not even me? I'm afraid not. Let me talk to her. No, Dad. If she doesn't want to see us, we'd better go. Thank you, Mrs. Parsons, for all you've done for us. Goodbye, Mrs. Rawlings. Goodbye. Oh, Mrs. Parsons. Uh, this gentleman here would like to have a word with Rawlings. Well, I'm afraid she's refusing to see anyone at the moment. Well, would you just ask her? Well, we can but try. Thank you. Gwen, here's a friend of yours. I said I didn't want to see anyone. Hello, Gwen. They've given you a raw deal, haven't they? Mr. Farrell, please. You're not going to leave us alone, aren't you? I'm sorry, no. This is just for you to say goodbye. You'll write me a letter now and then? Yes, of course I will, Gwen. But I want you to forget all about me. Forget you? Yes, it'll be much better that way. Oh, Red. That's funny, that is. I won't ever forget you, Red. I won't forget one tiny little thing about you. 
I love you. <laughs> Mr. Farrell, we must leave now. Come along, Gwen. Will you tell Matron I'm here? Yes, miss. Well, Gwen, this is your new home. How do you like it? I think it stinks. Oh, there's a lady to see you, Matron. Thank you, Roberta. Good afternoon, Mrs. Parsons. Good afternoon, Matron. Run along, Gwen. This is Gwen Rawlings. How do you do, Gwen? Say good afternoon to Matron, Gwen. You leave it to us. We know how to deal with girls who are tongue-tied. Well, they're her papers. Thank you. Goodbye, Gwen. Try and be happy. Goodbye, Matron. Goodbye, Mrs. Parsons. Come along, Gwen. Keep still, Gwen. Keep still. I thought they weren't going to send us any more. So did I. But it's the same story everywhere. Always asking us to squeeze in one more. There's nothing there. Clean enough, Gwen. You've got nice hair. Thanks for nothing, Gwen. I told you in my office, this attitude isn't going to get you very far. You're going to stay with us for a long time. You can be happy here, or otherwise, it's up to you. You can get dressed now. Here you are. Where are my own clothes? I want my own clothes. These are your clothes while you're with us. I wouldn't be seen dead in them! Very well. You can get dressed in your own good time. But you'll find it gets very chilly in here. Come along, Doctor. Roberta's the name. Roberta King. Big mouth Roberta, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Clever little girl, eh? Now, just you listen. In here, what I say goes, for two reasons. One, I'm good conduct girl, and I'm supposed to keep an eye on you for matron. And two, if I have any more of your lip, I'll hit you so hard you won't wake up for a week. Got it? You! We were just doing some exercises, Matron. Don't try and cover up, Roberta. Has Gwen been troublesome? No. It's only that she's new, that's all. I've warned you, Gwen. I shan't do it again. Now, come along, girls. Hey, you! Where's my clothes? 
I've told you, these are your things while you're with us. When I told you I wouldn't be seen dead in that muck. You bring my own clothes or I'll knock your buck off, you silly old faggot. Oh, this mills. Come along, girls, settle down. Come along, all of you. Hurry up and get dressed. Fresh for behavior. Get down to breakfast. See you leave this room tidy. Make your bed. Here you are, kid. Have a drag. Thanks. Roberta, matron says you're to take Gwen round the house and grounds. Show her everything so that you can find her way about and let her see there are no walls round Brownwood House. Yes, Mrs. Bourne. You'll like it here? Yeah? Really? Oh, I didn't at first, I wouldn't but... like it here if they paid me a million pounds. Shut up, you fool. You mustn't say that, Quinn. You don't understand. No news of any more staff, I suppose. What do you think? We could do something with these girls if we had a little more help. I often wonder how deep their apparent reform does go. you up. Robbie's tonic. Try it. Only a sip, mine. What is it? You'll see. Only a sip. Oh, it's sharp, isn't it? Up the river. Feel better? Yeah. Hey. Remember what I told you? Yes, Miss Mills. Good night, matron. I can't say. A little stick in my throat. Then be a sacker. You've got to. You can have quite a bit of fun in this place if you're well in with the teacher. Everything all right, Roberta? Yes, matron. Gwen, I've arranged for you to see the psychologist in the morning. Thank you, matron. Well, that's better. Good night, Gwen. Good night, matron. Good night, girls. Good night, Good night, Good night matron. matron. You're learning, kid. It's easy. It's easy when you know how. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Mrs. Barnes. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Mrs. Barnes. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Mrs. Barnes. Good morning, Doreen. Good morning, Mrs. Barnes. Good morning, Roberta. Good morning, Gwen. Good morning, Mrs. Barnes. That's it. But you must say it first. Will you remember that? Yes, Mrs. Barnes. That's right. Now help yourself and pass along. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Herbert? Persons? Johnson? Persons? Oliver? Williams? Wilkinson? Peters? Not expecting anything, are you? Yes, I was. Who from? A friend? I used to play the piano where I worked. Is that any reason for him to write to you now? He promised. Listen, you can bet your life if old Mills has got her knife into you, you won't get the chance of a smell of a letter. You mean she'd keep Brad's letters? Yes. She thought they were bad for little Gwynny's morale. Well, I hope I can find out for you. Could you? I'm on hall duty this week. I can have a deco easily in the letterbox. Well, thanks. Leave it to me. Any 
Well, two for you. Where were they posted? One from Charing Cross, the other one from SE1. Charing Cross? I bet that's red. Now, just let's see if you get them. Five girls! One for me. Yes, why? Oh, nothing. Slater? Evans? Who's it from? Mum. I told you so. My message to this conference is a very simple one and a very urgent one. Unless we can get more teachers and the very best type of teachers to take up work in approved schools. We are in danger of failing completely in one of the fundamental responsibilities of society. The salvaging of those youngsters whose natural growth has been marred by bad upbringing, bad companions, or plain bad luck. There's one case very much in my mind at this moment, a girl, I'll just call her Gwen, who's at a stage when Constant care and attention may make all the difference to the rest of her life. <laughs> Maybe she understands now. Do you? If I take my hand away, do you promise not to make a sound? You wouldn't sneak to old Mills, would you? If we tell you to get cigarettes for us, you'll get them, won't you? Now, get to bed, and if I hear you snivelling... OK? OK, let's get to bed. <laughs> Another letter for you today. How do you know? I had a deco while I was dusting. You know what that means, don't you? What? If he's written to you every month, there must be seven of them sitting down there in Old Mill's room. If I was you, I'd do something about it. What? I get in there sometime and pinch some of them. Well, it's not pinching, really, is it? They're yours, aren't they? Oh, she can have them. He must be sweet on you to write to you every month like that. Waiting for you, eh? No, he's married. Good night. Good night. Mills want to see her for? You shut your mouth. You'll be next. I should worry. You will. Good morning, Roberta. Good morning, Mrs. Bond. What happened? She wants you next. After breakfast. Agnes has blabbed the whole works. Bread and water for us. Last that little sneak.
I'll drop you right in London if you like. Right in. Thanks. Not a bit. Don't often pick up a pretty girl like you on the road. As a matter of fact, I come through for the day. What about having some dinner with me then? Maybe a dance or the uh, pictures. Thanks very much, but uh, I've got to meet my husband. He's working tonight and I promised to meet him when he finished. Working, eh? What's he doing for a living? You can't call it work, really. He's an all-in wrestler. <laughs> really? <laughs> Doesn't matter, thank you. Whom shall I say right now? No one. It doesn't matter. Going here. Where's Maxie? He's not here anymore. He's got a place at Brighton. Silver Slipper. Silver Slipper? Going down there? I'll try. Collie, I'm flat broke. Could you lend me a quid? All right. Thanks, Collie. You're a pal. Tell me where you were. I thought you were inside. I was, till this morning. I see. Well, I don't want you here. I've had enough trouble with you. And I don't want to get mixed up with anything or anybody anymore, so come and beat it. But, Max, I had to come to you. I've got nobody else to turn to. You know I didn't do it. That rat Jimmy fixed me on account of you. Did you hear what I said? But I've got no clothes. I had to pinch this to cover my uniform. They're bound to catch me soon. Please help me. All right, you can sleep here tonight. I've got a place upstairs. Tomorrow I'll get you some clothes, but after that, out you go. I'm not taking any risks. This is a respectable joint, understand? Of course. One thing, keep away from the club. Stay upstairs and don't come down. I don't want to see you. Understand? If you don't... Come on now. Okay, Maxi boy, I'll be no hurry. Now, what about nylons? You can have ten dozen or two quid a pair. How's that? Uh, too dear. Suit yourself. Oh, do you give me three quid any day? Any day. I was only doing you a favor. Why don't do me a favor over that scotch you promised me last week? I'm down to my last dozen. Yeah, not bad. It'll set you about three and a half a bottle. Yeah, it's a real McCoy. Shut up. Well, Maxie, do you want it or don't you? I'll take it. Okay. Tuesday night? Tuesday night. Go. Sure, her, Max. Hello. Now, look, boy, I'll tell you what I'll do. As a special favor to you, I'll... Oh. All right. What do you mean, all right? I told you to use the back stairs. Come on, beat it, or I'll... Oh, what? Come on. Now, Maxie, don't keep her all to yourself. What about an intro? Meet some friends of mine, Danny Martin, Fruity Lee. And this is, uh... Billy Carstairs. Have a drink, baby. Thanks. Champagne for the lady, George. Yes, sir. Happy days. Yeah, happy days. Where'd you find him, Max? 
They don't need to. They find me. They just can't keep away from me. I wish they'd come looking for me sometime. Good morning, Danny. Hiya. Uh, look who's here. Who's that? Trouble. The local dick. Detective Inspector Gurton. Not coming over here, is he? Suppose he is. What do we care? I don't like coppers. Well, you're not the only one. I'm going. No, no, no. Stay where you are. Don't act scare. We'll take you into lunch. Come on, Fruity. Well, I haven't finished this yet. You never will now. Come on, Ducky. Hi, Danny. Just off? No, just going to eat. I don't think we've met, have we? Billy Carstairs, meet Inspector Gurt. I'm very pleased to meet you. I haven't seen you around here before, have I? Stick around. You'll see a lot of her in future. So long, Pally. Pretty girl, Max. Where'd you find her? Very pretty. Much too pretty for us, Inspector. I said, where did you find her? I know nothing about her. You'd better ask Danny. Don't worry. I will. Where are we going? Out to my place for a drink. Supposing I don't want to. Suppose you do. That's flat in Hove, right on the seafront. Shut up. That doesn't mean I like it. You all like it. Taking things for granted, aren't you? They'll be granted. That's what you think. Oh, oh, oh it's 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 up. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Cheerio, Danny. I'm off. Cheerio, Pug. Good night, my love. Yes. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. You shouldn't let it come. You better go too, Fruity. I haven't finished my drink yet. I said you better go too. Well, it's only one o'clock. You heard. Oh, he never lets me finish a drink. You should start earlier. Fruity. <laughs> Good night, Sandy. Good night, kid. Good night, Fruit. Bye. Don't strain yourself. <laughs> How about a nightcap, kid? No, no more for me. I've had enough. You can take it. It's late. I must go, too. You can sleep here. Ah, oh, no, Max, you wouldn't like it. Don't you worry about Max. He won't lose any sleep. How do you know? I know, Max. We do business together. You leave him to me. I don't think I... Danny, don't be so rough. I'm a rough boy. Or didn't you know? Give the dog to make it win. <laughs> oh, you went off the one. <laughs> what have I said that's so wrong? <laughs> you don't dump the winner, stupid. You don't pull the others. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the cuckoo came out backwards and says, Can anybody tell me the time? <laughs> Come on, boys and girls. We're shutting up. Do you think I want the place ready? Oh, no. Get out, Max. Get out. What's the problem? Oh, I know what. Let's take the car and run up to town. Oh, now, what's the point? Then we can go to a real nightclub for a change. What do you say? Come on, Max. She come with us. Do you good. No, thank you. And you shouldn't go either. Anyway, they'll be shutting up by the time you get there. Oh, no. Tell them not to shut, won't you? Now, listen, baby, I've got gallons of booze back at my place. Oh, don't be a spoil sport. Fruity! Fruity, bring the bottle! Oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Cheerio, boys. Cheerio. Hey, pipe down. You want the whole of Brighton to know. Oh, shut up. Come on, Maxie, come with us. 
Don't go. Stay here. You're drunk. Drunk? I warn you not to get into mischief again. I won't have it. Don't forget this. Oh, mercy. Come on, come on. Lay off him and let's get going. Hey, come out. Mama wants to drive. Listen, baby, you're plastered. I just want them to see how well Papa taught her. Okay, but be careful. So long, Maxie boy. See you later. Throw them bottles out the window. Give me a drink first. I need it. You What's she doing there? Yes, they're leaving their cop there lying on the street right there. Don't you dress up the old boy. Shut up, shut up. Now, listen to me, all of you. There's nothing to worry about so long as you all keep your trap shut. We will, Danny. I know you will, Connie. But remember, keeping your trap shut don't mean just keeping it shut. It means looking as though you really know nothing about anything when some guy with big feet asks you where you were on Wednesday night. What about that windscreen? I'll get the Amersmith boys down to work on that. We can't take a chance like you that. You let me worry about that. All you've got to do is remember you spent tonight playing poker here till five o'clock. Is that clear? Yeah. Danny. Okay, you better scram. Come on, Ida. Come on. No, it was all your fault. You made me Put it down, put it down, and shut the door off. Stop shouting and talking. Time you were asleep. Come on, you heard what I said. Danny, I'm frightened. Nothing to be frightened of. I don't like cops. You let me handle them. I know how to tackle them. Go on. Off you go. At us. Be your age. He's only looking round. I tell you, he's staring at us. Have it your own way. I'm going. No, you don't. Not this time. Do you want to make him suspicious? If he comes over here, I'm going. No, you're not. You're going to face right up to him and act to say you like it. Coming. Good morning, Dad. Oh, good morning, Gert. Have a drink, Pally? No, I've got one, thanks. That's a smashing new car you've got outside. Not bad. Must have set you back a pretty package. I can afford it. What became of the old one? Why, want to buy it? <laughs> what, on a policeman's salary? It's going cheap. How was that? Is it damaged? <laughs> Give her another one, George. No, I, uh, I just got tired of it. 
Oh, I might come over and have a look at it one day, if it's cheap. Better be quick. I've got a couple of bits for it already. How about now? Sorry, can't manage now. I've got a date. All right, I'll look by tomorrow. What do you want a car for, anyway? Mine was in a smash. You mean you hit something? No. No, something hit me. A woman driver and drunk. Can you beat it? I don't like the way you say that, copper. And I didn't like the way she did it. A friend of mine got killed. Good morning. Are you trying to land us in jail? I'm sorry, I can't help it. I don't like coppers. He's going to be snooping around. I'm getting out. You're what? I didn't mean it, Danny. Don't be a silly boy. You were the silly one just now, and I didn't like it. In future, you behave yourself. Understand? Yes. All right, OK. Don't worry. out on me. Oh. Yes, Billy. I just got tired of it, Danny. You know, sick to death of Fruity and all the others. And sick to death of me? <laughs> of course not, Danny. I was frightened, you know, frightened of that copper. That's too bad. In a minute or two, you'll know what it's like to be really frightened. What are you going to do? Me? I'm getting off at the next station. Daddy. You wouldn't have let me. Daddy! Don't be a silly boy! No! Daddy, please! Oh. Oh. seen a dame before. Yeah, but this one's different. Yeah, she prefers the floor. I'm gonna take a look-see. Don't be a jerk. She's probably dead. Come on, let's get out of here. So what? She's got pretty legs. You no know, good if she's a stiff. I'm still gonna have a look. Uh-oh. Hey, wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Danny! You okay? You women sure choose the darndest places to go to sleep. What happened? He tried to kill me. 
Are you kidding? I guess he was the one that was kidding. He certainly wasn't kidding when he hung that on you. Where's my coat? What about it? Dirty double crossing. Where are we? Ah, uh, coming here, Victoria, I think. Come on, kid, you better come along with us. Well, if you could help me to a telephone box. Lady, you want a telephone, we'll find it for you. Nobody home? What are you gonna do now? It's my business. Why don't you come along with us? No, thanks. I'll manage. Look, we got a corner scotch at our place. Oh, well, that's different. Come on, kid. Don't worry about a thing. Just leave everything to us. Thank Jack. First. Mm. Funny. She's done it again. How much is that you owe me? Well, let's see. Twelve pounds, six shillings, and fourteen pence. <laughs> when are you going to pay me? As soon as the army gets around to paying us what we're worth. Say, don't you boys ever go on parade or anything? Sure, sometimes. When we're good and ready. We got to leave. Mm-hmm. For good conduct. Yeah? Yeah. The little lady's just saying she'd like another drink. All right? Correct. All right. Hey, that bottle isn't as full as it was. Guess we better send a supply column, eh, hey, Corporal? Yes, sir, Colonel. Let's go. From Georgia, taking a hell of an engineer. A hell of a hell hey. of a hell. Do you see what I see? What's wrong? Looks uh, stupid. Uh oh, snowdrops. Let's beat it. No sense in that. They'd have every cop in the neighborhood in our tails before we got 50 yards. Don't do anything till I give you the high sign. Okay, babe. Play up to the big guy. Hi, fellas. Okay, soldier, let's see a pass. You too, Sergeant. Got any gum, Sarge? Haven't your friends got any? Oh, sure, but I bet it doesn't taste as nice as yours. Listen, don't crowd me, sister. These are phony, all right. You guys look like a couple of deserters. Al Schwartz and Mickey Malone. Oh, Sergeant, you wouldn't spoil my evening, would you? Listen, sister, will you please keep oh, out look, of this? Oh, look, Sarge. Come on, Mickey! I never even saw what happened. I'll show you. Puts my hand on his shoulder. He then gets a glassy look in his eye. Before he can figure out what's happening, I give him the old one time. All right. All right, Mickey, you show me what happened to your guy. Yeah, go on. Show him, Mickey. I'll show you. Oh, I'll boy. show you. Hey, 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 come on, have a Stop little drink. beat it, will you? Sit down and relax. He's looking at you. He's looking at both of you. You stick with us, kid. You'll see plenty of excitement. Yeah, and the three of us ought to do okay together. Oh, excuse me. I wonder if you can let me touch. I want to tell you that I'm going to have no compass. Can I assist you? Quick, get his watch. I'm between 25 and 30. <laughs> That's not funny. Boy, are we hot. Red hot. Well, there's no sense in sticking our necks out. Baby, looks like this is where we split up. 
Oh, Mickey, you don't mean that. I got some thinking to do. I can't stick around here anymore. They tell me there's a place called uh, Manchester up north somewhere. How about that, huh? Okay by me. Manchester's 200 miles. How are we going to get there? By car. What car? I got an idea. Now look, kid. This is the setup. You stand in the middle of the road and stop the car. And if it doesn't stop? He's got to if you're right in front of him, hasn't he? Or I get killed. He'll stop all right. Okay, I'll risk it. Then you beat it over to the driver's seat and start yelling, savvy? What'll I say? Oh, you know, oh, please help me. I'm in terrible trouble. Somebody attack me. That kind of malarkey. Uh-huh. And Al and I do our stuff, and uh, baby gets a nice new car to take it to Manchester. I hope that guy's got some dough on him. He'll have some dough. Don't worry. Guys in cars always do. All set? Yep. Now pick a nice one. No tin lizards. Okay, kids, this is it. Red! Uh, uh, drive on! Red, drive on! Don't get out! Drive on, you fool! Can I give you a lift? Mickey, back in the car and watch that road. Okay, snap it up. Yeah, sure I will. Red! Red, I didn't mean it! Red! Hey, come on, you two! Oh, camera! Let me go! Oh! Red! Let me go, Red! Red! That guy, she knows him. So what? Let's get out of here. If she knows him, he knows her. I'm gonna settle him. Everybody open them up, will you? We're in a hurry. Sorry, this gate's closed for the night. You'll have to go along to Marble Arch. Have a heart, will you open them up? Sorry. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Come on, you better come out of there. When the policeman helped her out of the car, life came to an end for Gwen. What do you mean? She's got to wait 15 years for her second chance. You've got yours now. Make the most of it, Lala. Can I go now? If you want to, what's the hurry? Well, I can't stay here all night, can I? Oh, I suppose not. Besides, I, I won't half cop it from Dad if he finds out I'm late. Good night. Good night, Lala. And thanks a lot. <laughs>